Wanted to go to the West 2 Courthouse Studio, get some legal analysis now. My colleague Andrea Jackson standing by. Thank you, Sion. Good morning. We are at the West 2 Courthouse Studios. I'm joined by attorney Richard Hornsby, who's been our legal analyst here at the West 2 Courthouse Studios, and also attorney Whitney Bone, who actually shares an office with Cheney Mason. You've been watching this testimony. You were mentioning to me earlier, Werner Spitz, a very fascinating guy. He is. He actually uh, participated in the commission that did the autopsy for President John F. Kennedy Jr.'s autopsy, Martin Luther King Jr.'s autopsy, Mary Jo Kopech May, who everybody knows was associated with the Kennedy case um, where she drowned, um, the California Night Stalker murders. Um, he's, he's either supervised or performed over 60,000 autopsies. It's very impressive. So watching this go on, watching Cheney Mason work in the courtroom, what's your reaction? Um, I uh, think that Cheney obviously is an excellent defense attorney. Um, you have not only a very skilled defense attorney um, with a lot of experience, but he's questioning a witness who obviously has uh, a lot of experience doing autopsies. So this is a, an interesting part of the trial. And Richard, we were talking about this earlier. A question came up. Uh, he did the autopsy back in 2008, but didn't file the paperwork until 2011. Can you explain why that might have happened? I, I think it goes back again to one of Jose Baez's original problems is that they were holding back all their information. Um, and it wasn't until Judge Perry came on to the case and he started setting these deadlines that they were forced to basically come forward and disclose this well before the trial. And that's why, even though he made the examination so long ago the report didn't get filed until 2011 which I believe was in line with the the deadlines that were set with, by Judge Perry. And how effective has he been so far? Well obviously he's a well-respected um, uh, medical examiner and, and I think the jury is going to relate with him and it's going it, to be interesting to see how Jeff Ashton comes at him if it is in fact Jeff Ashton um, because you know this guy is well-respected this isn't his first rodeo either he's um, I'm sure prepared for Jeff Ashton um, but to date, I'm very impressed. Uh, however, I do have some background in, in, in forensics and, and things of that nature. And what he is leaving out, though, is the circumstances of how the body was, was found. A medical examiner is allowed to make that, that kind of leap to say, I think it was something other than an accidental death. Uh, you know, and I, I think he's leaving it out. And that's where Dr. G and him are really going to differ, because Dr. G is more of a, uh, a, a criminal uh, investigator, if you will and a medical doctor and he's taking it purely from like a medical standpoint saying well you know I, I just unless I have a video of what happened I, I can't rule out the accidental death and I think that's where his testimony is really going to differ from Dr. G. And, and Whitney I know you're you're sitting in you share an office you're a defense attorney with Cheney Mason but but play the other side for me what's going through your mind if, if you're Jeff Ashton at this point? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I could put myself in Jeff Ashton's <laughs> shoes um, or, or that I would be effective at doing so, but um, I definitely think that, um, you know, I, I think Mr. Mason's doing a really good job. I think that this is a witness that the jury is certainly going to take a lot of notice from um, because he does have such a breadth of experience, um, and although um, the state has put forth a medical examiner they're obviously going to consider both that they both that they hear from as far as what they put out to say. And you were in the courtroom earlier when Judge Belvin Perry went after Jose Baez what was it like? Um, well I, I don't think he specifically went after just Jose I think that he made comments about the fact that um, he felt like um, there were some problems as far as how he perceived things were handled by both sides. I I could tell you that the, the the mood in the courtroom was that you could have heard a pin drop. It was it was obviously a pretty tense moment, but all right. Sian, we'll send it back to you. Andrea, thank you so much.